Today's story was written by a Reddit user, jazzlikead1922. I don't get it. The scientist spoke out of the blue, staring at the uplifted canine in confusion. What? She can only stare back in confusion as well, not expecting the council's main scientist to just randomly say he doesn't know something. I don't get why all of you keep serving the humans. He then points at the humans at the other end of the engineering room. Serving? Pets, animals, servant, vassal, slut. I'm going to stop you right there. We are equals. There is none of this serving stuff you are talking about, she interrupted with a hint of annoyance in her voice. But you follow them around like a... He tries to imply again. You mean doing my job? I'm a guard dog. Literally. Then explain why you, uh, uplifted animals only shows up with a human, but never the other way around. Are you serious? Yes. We all think it's some kind of a subservient mindset your client has had forced upon them for centuries of, what the hell gave you that idea? We are free to do whatever we want. Oh really? Then how come none of you takes charge? Of what? Everything, he shouted at her. He couldn't believe how dense she was, or was this another mind trick the humans have done to them? Take charge on what to do or punish them when they are clearly doing something wrong, or, I don't know, leave Earth without them? Dear Dust Mother, do you know how hard it is to watch Earth's Olympic Games? When it is obvious that all of you let the humans win. You are three times bigger, stronger, not smart, but obviously far superior to them. I'm going to skip the part where you basically called me a dumbass brute. You watch our Olympics? Yes, it's humiliating that you all keep protecting some furless monkey's ego. It's sad to see you think you need humans. We don't need humans, we want them. Also, it's more of like they need us kind of situation. Look, I doubt that, but I have an idea. To stop that weird dependence of humans you uplifts have, I propose that tomorrow every non-human will leave the ship and just wait a single day. You will see you don't need them anymore. Sure, sure. It's just one day, right? Good. Now then, wait. On one condition. Was this necessary? Yes. Currently, the interstellar ship was docked in a space station where all non-humans were in one room. The uplifted species of man were all grumpy and nagging, some complaining that they don't have the time to stay idle, some bickering at others, and few wondering what their counterparts were doing at this time. Stars, and you still don't think that your species is reliant on humans too much? She said nothing, too busy to look at security cameras installed in the ship. That was her one condition, is to be able to monitor the humans in the ship while they are away. As the council's main scientist watched the uplifted species complaining, he noticed a small group approaching him. Mind telling me what is the meaning of this again? The captain of the ship asked, finally running out of patience. Ah, Captain, not to worry. It's all but an experiment. He wants to prove that we are over-reliant on humans, the uplifted canine interrupted. Really? I don't have time for this. The captain was about to walk out of the room until a crew member spoke up. What is he looking for? He pointed at the large screen. Someone is looking under the kitchen's tables and cabinets only to get more frustrated and roaming around the cafeteria towards the other humans. Thomas was looking for one thing. He doesn't understand why he couldn't find it. He thought he was finally going to get a good day today, without any uplifted stooges around. No random event of fixing something, no D&D campaign ending aliens, and it was lunchtime. So, where the hell is the cookie jar? He walks into the cafeteria, not realising the lack of non-humans. Where is my cookie jar? He shouted. Every single human turned to stare at him. You had a cookie jar? 
one human spoke up. Yes, it used to be in the cabinet in the kitchen. So, where is it? Everyone was quiet, some staring at another while others were whispering about also getting their own jar of cookies. Eventually, fingers were pointed at one another and heated arguments began to take place. That was until someone walked towards the head engineer. Uh, hey Thomas, about that. I might have e- Where is it? He shouted at Greg, holding him by his collar. What's going on? The scientist stared in shock while his colleagues are taking notes on human behaviours. He is hangry, the uplifted canine answered, staring at the monitor. Hangry? He looked at her, not sure if the translating unit has malfunction or wasn't able to translate that last part. It obviously means that he is angry and hungry. Aren't you a scientist? The captain spoke. Yes, but... I bet Greg took it, the uplifted alien stares at the screen, glaring at the culprit. I bet it's a scientist. Maybe it's like an experiment in an experiment, a small alien-like hedgehog accused the scientist. I think you spend too much time with the human. You're starting to think like the Matenma. I'm worried about you, Zelo the reptile-like alien interrupted. You dare accuse me of... What is that? He stood, stunned by the accusation, and suddenly was staring at something crawling in the cafeteria. Something small, metal, and... Is that a knife? Where is it? He shouted at Greg, holding him by his collar, until something stabbed the back of his foot. Ah, fuck! What the fuck?! He let go of Greg and was kneeling down, resting his left hand on the wound and staring at the Roomba. The humans all stood up and watched as the Roomba roams with blood dripping from the knife that was taped to its back. Good news guys, I fixed my baby, James shouted with joy after the incident that got his baby destroyed. He spent months on fixing it, refusing to buy a replacement. Not this shit again, Thomas screamed proceeds to grab hold of the Roomba and threw it at the wall next to James. It never stood a chance. Time slowed down as James screamed, crying, holding his dying baby, again, humans staring at each other in silence. Then it began. Why are they all fighting? The scientist screamed, not understanding how nor why such a fight was currently happening. No. A small war started in the cafeteria. It looked like they were fighting till death. That's what happens when humans are left alone for too long. The uplifted canine yelled at him, holding him by the collar and shaking him. Where's security? The captain asked, looking at every security feed. Then noticed everyone from security is in the room with them. Wait, there's Sarah. The uplifted feline pointed at the human security guard that's running towards a group of humans and beating them up. Oh god. Stop resisting, Sarah shouted, while at the same time joining the fight, wielding a large riot shield and beating people with it. Give me back my cookies. I deserved it. I bought it. Thomas yelled from the other side of the cafeteria. He tackles Greg to the floor. I don't have your fucking cookies anymore, Greg shouted, trying to land punches on the engineer. You bastard! Thomas! James roared his name, running as fast as possible into the two, with eyes filled with, well, tears. Come on then, I can take the both of you. Well, I could have. Thomas sat on the floor, looking away from the glaring eyes of the uplifted canine, her bipedal form giving her a height far too big and honestly kinda terrifying from the human's point of view. The aliens rushed back to the ship and managed to calm down the ensuing war in the cafeteria. Medical assistance was given and more rules were set up for this situation, preventing it from happening again. Just stop talking, she responded back coldly, while bandaging his bruises and injuries he had received. Technically I did, 
I said shut it. The three of you knocking each other out at the same time doesn't count as take the both of you. You mock me, it should count. How are you feeling? Sore, hungry, pissed off and tired. The usual then? Huh, I guess you're right. Guess it's just a normal everyday thing. Something always goes wrong now. She finally stopped bandaging the wounds and he had difficulty standing up. The scientist stares as the humans were all wounded because of his actions. How was he supposed to know that humans aren't supposed to be left alone with their own kind for six hours? While his colleagues are taking notes and asking questions from humans, much to the annoyance of the crewmates and uplifted alike. Now say you're sorry. The scientist heard the uplifted feline forcing the only human security guard to apologise to the other humans she has beaten to submission. I'm sorry, she whispered. Did you have to use the shield? A human with the broken leg pointed out, since she was most likely able to beat them without it. Well, it felt cool she said, while still holding the shield with pride. Sarah! The feline shouted, hitting the human in the shoulder. He killed my baby! James cried, being cradled by the uplifted avian. I know, I know, he spoke soothingly. So young! He kept crying, as he is being patched up from Zelo. The captain can only shake his head, and glaring towards the scientist both knowing and acknowledging that it was his fault that this mess has happened. Also trying their absolute best to ignore that Matenma just dragged the Roomba away and into the dark hallway creepily, while no one else had noticed it but them. The scientist was starting to understand a bit now. Hearing all the conversation around him and looking at the injured people being taken care of, the uplifted species didn't stay because they are forced to. They aren't ordered to stay close, nor on a mental leash. It's because the humans need them the most. But the humans don't know that, and if they were to be alone once again? It's best not to think about it. He watched as the human engineer got up, and the canine pointed at another injured human on the floor. He tried to say something, only to receive a glare from her. He slowly walks towards the injured man. Guess humans really do need them. He will inform the odd situation that the humans have to the council. Greg, look. Thomas walked up to Greg, laying on the floor, being patched up by another uplifted species and an alien crewmate. Yeah? Greg asked weakly, staring at him. I'm sorry. Fuck you, Thomas. Thomas.